If you separated the human body into individual cells, over 50% of them would be bacteria. There are around 10 trillion cells in the human microbiome, and the only thing between all of those bacteria and our vital organs is a single layer of intestinal cells. While it may look as if this single cell layer functions as a wall to keep bacteria out, in reality there's a lot of exchange and cooperation between the microbiome and the human cells. Your microbiome is a part of you, and together you get nutrients and prevent infection. There's an ecosystem in your gut that has the friendly bacteria of your microbiome, the intestinal cells, and the immune cells. The problem is that we don't know exactly how they work together yet. Researchers at the Rockefeller University uncovered some new aspects of the intestinal ecosystem that keep it in tip-top shape, and it turns out that the bacteria in your gut are a key part of it. These researchers focused on the role of the gut immune cells, not only because they're the first line of defense against infection, but also because the researchers thought they may help with normal gut function. They focused on a specific type of immune cell called intestinal intraepithelial lymphocytes, or IELs for short. Thanks to some seriously cool imaging, the researchers were able to track these IELs in live mouse intestines. They found that in a normal mouse, the IELs scan parts of the intestinal wall. Each IEL has its own cells to tend to so that every intestinal cell gets visited by an immune cell. But finding out that the IELs scan the intestinal wall wasn't enough. These researchers wanted to know what the IELs depend on for their scanning behavior. They first tested whether the IELs would still scan the wall if there was no bacteria in the gut. To test this, they used germ-free mice that lack their own microbiome. These germ-free mice showed less efficient scanning, kind of like walking around a track versus wandering aimlessly in a little circle. After learning that the microbiome played a role, the researchers also wanted to see if the intestinal wall cells communicated with the IELs. They shut down the wall cell's ability to sense the microbiome by removing MyD88, a protein in the wall cells that's important for bacteria detection. Once they removed MyD88, they saw that the IELs no longer scanned as efficiently, just like when there was no microbiome at all. It seems likely that the IELs actually depend on the wall cells for their scanning behavior, like how you can't comfort someone if you don't know that they're sad. After learning about the interactions between the microbiome, the intestinal wall cells, and the IELs, the researchers wanted to see what happened to this ecosystem when the mice were sick. They looked at mice infected with two different intestinal pathogens, salmonella or toxoplasma. When the mice were infected, the researchers saw that the IELs didn't just scan the wall anymore. Instead, they began squeezing between the intestinal wall cells. The researchers called this behavior flossing. Yeah, like what you do with your teeth. They saw that the flossing happened more frequently at places in the gut with more pathogens. When the researchers removed bacteria sensing with MyD88, the IEL flossing behavior stopped too. In order to floss, the IELs need to up their energy usage, kind of like how I need a snack before going to the gym. When the researchers prevented the IELs from getting extra energy by removing the GLUT1 sugar receptor, the mice were more vulnerable to infection. More work will have to be done to figure out exactly what these IELs are doing in the intestinal ecosystem, but we know that the scanning and flossing behavior is important to keeping the intestines intact and infection-free. It's possible that learning more about the immune gut ecosystem could help us understand diseases like Crohn's or celiac. But for now, just know that your immune system is working for you, even in the gut. <laughs>